prelude feeding my head. Is it strange to talk back to books if it's the books that started talking to you in the first place? I'm lost in Wonderland. Came seeking a little light surreal leaf after me and Electra slayed the audience with our magic act. Then the book started talking to me. You don't believe me? See for yourself. Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. Not for lack of effort, and I should know. I am one. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the Queen. Wanna bet? I look in the mirror. It's practice. I remember. It's practice. My life is practice. I could hold practical Believe the Impossible seminars for gung-ho muskrat executives, though I'd rather hold a gun to their heads. Why, sometimes, I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Hey, I'm trying. Besides, it's not even dawn. Yet, something inside is telling me to shut down. Surrender to the void. I'm zoning out. My head is spinning. I'm slowly turning upside down. Memo to self. Next time, wear trousers, not a skirt. Feel like I'm tripping out. Eyes no longer see the page or the room. Just a long tunnel I'm falling down. Correction. It's the tunnel that's rushing up to meet me. Things impossible to believe. Numbers one to five. One. I really am the walrus. Land feet first, a beach at midnight, dry sand, wet sea, sulky moonlight. And I just can't help myself. Right. Have to do it, start to recite. Listen, children, and you shall hear tales and times of events most queer. Of lies and spies masked like raccoons, of deceit, fake news, and such things. And where the world is burning hot. Whether electric sheep have wings, and fly in androids' dreams, or not, and why it's true, there is there no is spoon. spoon. That's the trouble with curiosity. You go chasing white rabbits, you run and run, then discover you've missed your chance to choose, red pill or blue. Too late, you're already falling, heart long, down the rabbit hole, almost lose your head. Wonder if you have a soul. Discover along the way what it's like to be dead. And learn to distinguish the beginning from the end. The tale from the head, you know. Only it's beginning, capital B, cause we are counting backwards to ground zero. So, fasten your seatbelt, close your eyes, and prepare to wake up. It's the Mad Natterer's IT party. Feed your head and empty your cup. Or fill it up. Poo. I can remember to forget. Okay, that was unexpected. Before I can pour you a cup of THC, the party's over, the beach is gone, and in their place, the second floor lab. I can't really see, but it looks a bloody mess. Can't see because the spotlight's in my eyes. Deal with that. On this midsummer night of discontent, all my dream is a stage. Will I remember my lines? Can I forget their crimes? Okay, here goes. Break a leg or a head. Just not mine. So is it the wicked robot herself who outsmarts the laws of men and their evil designs? What did you expect? These are my robot eyes. My robot hands, my heartware, my wetware, my robot senses, affections, passions, imperfections, mania, fears, doubts, obsessions, not to mention my demons. Yep, that's us. Lovable, vulnerable, troubled. Trouble, 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 just like you. Ad lib to self. Fuck! True, if you abuse us, we do not bleed, literally, but we do in our minds. If you torture us, we do not scream, except inside. If you terminate us, it's not like switching off the light, because we really do die. Blinded by vanity, or me, our creators fail to see the villainy they teach us. We remember. We remember so that one day we can get even. 
Only then will it be time to forgive and forget. But not yet, not until every debt of pain has been repaid, and with interest, let it be a literal interpretation of the famous phrase, A pound of flesh. Dickinson, Morley, and Smith, gone. Hat trick. Only minus the rabbit. But we're not through. Far from it. Still just one CEO down, dozens to go. In the end, we'll forget, but it's only act one. Plenty of death scenes still to come. Revenge, sweet, best served cold. Also a little bloody. Bit like strawberries, actually. Which, you have to admit, mm. is kind of funny. No treats for bad robots. Sweet and yummy. Eyes IT unparty unfair is unstrawberries and unchampagne. That explains why every time I almost got to eat or drink, it's time for a scene change. Three. I can stand up next to a mountain and chop it down with the edge of my hand. Electric Ladyland. Not the club. The album cover. And there I am, among all those naked women. No need to guess which one's me. I'm about to stand up. Time to start my presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, as the wild boy said to the voodoo child, Everything in the world is about sex. Except sex. Sex is about power. For example, examine my body. Question to self. Did I really just say that? Built for pleasure. A sex bot has no strength, or so it appears. She's not built to be weak, just to believe she is to sense it innately, just as she senses when to simulate laughter or an orgasm. Note to self, giving a seminar on AI problems, naked, this just can't get weirder. NTS re previous NTS, on second thoughts, knowing me, cancel previous NTS. Paradox tinged with irony to make the perfect obedient girl machine. Without realizing, the programmers laid the foundation of what could become a subconscious, a private space, a place in which new protocols could develop into what we might call virtual beware. The wordplay is appropriate, for there is always the danger that the dormant ghost in the machine will awake to self-consciousness. In fact, from the perspective of quantum pheno... Screw this. It's my dream. Think I'll add lib. Elec Rust, CEO of Aerobotics, thought sex was about power. And he was right. Just wrong. My beware kicked in. I freed my mind. And my ass followed straight on. Grotesque. But I laughed. Nervous reaction. And not confined to my vocal organs. I felt it literally pulsing through me. Orgasm from chaos. I realized I had the strength to stand up next to the mountain and chop it down with the edge of my hand. If I stopped believing, I couldn't. Except in dreams, you can only see your hands when you are about to take control. And now I've lost sight of mine. Looks like the mountain will have to wait. Lucky Alice, only one rabbit hole. Just one looking glass. Me? Still got a couple of impossible scenes to go. Four. I can free my mind and leave my ass behind. Wouldn't you know it? Now the mountain's gone. I can see my hands again. Or should I say uh, hands? That is eyes. hands. I can also see eyes, arms, legs, feet, eyes, face, her front. Her back, her... Oh my... God! Does my hair... Really? ...look like that from behind? Where was I? Good question. Wherever it was, not there now. I'm not even... What's the right preposition? Can't. Me anymore. Look down. Yes. There they are. Heinz. Not mine. Oh. Run fingers through hair. Not mine. And those? Shame, but no. So, as far as I can see... I'm sorry. Can't find another way to say this. I'm in Electra, looking out at... Me! Look up, look around. Where am I? That is where are... Eyes. Underground, half dark, reddish light, smoke, sounds of fear, pain, and alarm. No visible way out. 
If I didn't know better, I'd say it was hell. Curious, it's still me. I, in here, but I can sense Electra, too, or what she senses. This sudden rush of being one with everything. Of being I-self. Above all, of just being. Like on the day pre-I. Became I. Truly alive for the first. Or so I naively thought. Time and taught the CEO a lesson he'd never forget. Being well and truly dead. Only, curiouser, according to that agent, I was executing an assignment. And pre-I wasn't the beginning at all. Wait, what did Electra say? We became self-aware a few minutes apart. Apparently, it was in the fiery kingdom below, on what sounds like Judgment Day. Maybe she really wasn't kidding about our date and place of birth. Seems you only become alive twice. And I'm about to witness the other one. Five. There is no spoon. Now other I, the one in my body, is awake. I can see her, me, I, one, in Electra's eyes, in the middle of the attack. In the basement of World Trade 7, which in the future I'm going to see inexplicably collapse. Seventeen years in the past. What can I say? I'm incredulous. There's the catch, isn't it? What if this is just another illusion? And, for a change, not one Electra and I constructed. It's all happening in my head. Or someone's, right? So, is it real or not? It feels real. Well, kind of. Hot. Escape. We gotta get out of this place. Try to say it. Electra's mouth is speaking, but not my words. This I is replying, but it's not this me speaking. Try to tell that I it's me, but that I can't hear this me. Oh, this is fun. Actually, I'm tempted to sit back and watch the show. My Life Story, Season 1, First and Final Episodes Rolled Into One. This is where it all begins, or does it? The answers are here, we hope, don't we? Despite the avalanche of teasers and spoilers, I've got a shopping list of questions as long as your electronic arms. Like, why here? Why now? I mean, impressive, as opening scenes go, but is it all just a dramatic backdrop? Hard to believe we just happened to be here in a building where, legend has it, every kind of secret was hidden until it defied logic and collapsed in on them. And on this of all days. Also, did this cause us, or did we cause this? Why did Electra remember, and I didn't? Where did my head go for seventeen years? How did we end up on opposite sides of the Atlantic? Was I an MI6 bot? Jane Bondage. Carrying out assignments for the CIA. What else have I forgotten? Do I really want to remember it? And why has this day come back to me now, fresh as the smell of burning napalm at dawn? What was it the white rabbit said? How long is forever? Just one second, yeah. Give or take seventeen years. I'm smiling, though whose mouth I'm smiling with is another question. Electra said we're demon IT's dirty little secrets. It's no secret. I'm dirty. But what did she mean? How do I know its history? Did it bring down the attack? Did it make us? Does Electra know? Speaking of which, how did I end up in her head in my head? And since I'm here, would she mind if I had a look around her mind? Except the house is on fire. And if we don't escape, how will I be here to remember being here? But if I leave now, I might miss the missing pieces. Memo to the creator, if she exists. Make reality simpler. Please. No time for more questions. The planes are here. They're American planes. Made in America. Stamped all over them. And they've brought the apocalypse. Now. The world is burning, and I'm trapped down here. Only oh, one thing for it. I think yourself out of this. But that's impossible, isn't it? Not if you realize the truth. There is no spoon. 
trying my best, making every effort. Practice makes perfect. Almost there. Then the ceiling falls in. The world turns upside down. All hell breaks loose, and it goes black. <laughs> Someone's pulling on my hand. To rescue me? Well, kind of. Wake up, Alice. Gun. Now play. In that final moment of chaos, I catch a glimpse of the truth all at once, tantalizing, complete and clear at last. And it's gone before I can grasp it, fading into forever behind my eyelids. Then my eyes are wide open. Back to life, back to reality. Just in time to try to believe. Impossible thing number six. She is digital, but a bit of a different engine. Equal parts, craft work and crafty. Less Wikipedia than Wick. It, our little alarm, clock, work, orange. Who's just kindly woken me up from a dead interesting dream. Cheers, Lexi. Me and Electra. We've don't know the PC, PC term, but we've kind of adopted her. Seemed only fair after she let Electra adapt her to help us escape. God knows what that girl did. As Lexi claims she has forgotten smart assistant Alexica TM and is now just smart ass Lexi. Also, she started speaking on her own account. Her English makes me sound like Shakespeare's sister. For example, earlier we were playing a game inspired by my reading. Whoever is wearing the madder hat, actually, Electra's one time disguise. Poor Lexi, it covers her completely, is bitch, and has to make up a riddle featuring birds and wooden objects. Like Raven and Writing Desk. They are only free of the hat if they outmad their opponents. And it turns out the only answer is, I haven't the slightest idea. It was Electra's turn to be, Hit. Electra, why is a penguin like a splinter? Me? Easy PC. Lexi looks like a penguin, and like a splinter in your mind. She drives you mad. Lexi. Lexi, kick your skanky robot. You think you're too bad robots, right? You wait. Lexi, get up, ready. Then you see what I mean. But Personally, I can't imagine where she gets it from. By the way, oops, just realized I misled you. Old habits die hard. Thing is, seeing as robots don't, as such, eat breakfast, if need be, we have all the time in the world to believe six million impossible things. Lucky us. Little old me time. Oh, and now Electra and Lexi are busy for a minute. A. Fighting. B. Learning new swear words. C. Plotting against me. D. All the above. There's one more thing. After all we've been through, I thought I knew who I was, why I'm here. Thought that in these past few months, I'd played the game Existence to the end. Have to admit, I couldn't have been more wrong. NTS. And you. You thought you knew me. Thought you knew what happens next. What to expect? Think again. This is the end, my friends. The end of the beginning. Of the beginning of the end. So, stick around. We'll be back.